Tonight from Island Mama's New Life, and we're starting a series of sessions on how to use Joomla um, to deliver your blog. And Linda is uh, currently using WordPress, and although we can host WordPress and we can manage it, um, Linda's somewhat of a crash test dummy for us, and we're installing Joomla and uh, using that to deliver the blog. And what we're going to do is cover everything, absolutely everything, right from buying a domain, choosing a domain, setting that up, installing uh, Joomla, configuring it, installing a template, right the way through to getting your articles up there, and then, more importantly, making sure that those articles rank well in, in Google. So I'm just going to hand you over to Linda for a moment while I switch off another screen that's uh, causing a problem for me. Linda? <laughs> okay, what am I going to say? Okay, I've been running a blog for a couple of years on WordPress, but I feel that it's very amateur, and I would like to do something more professional now. But I need help because, well, one of the things in favor of WordPress is that it's very easy. Mm -hmm. um, well, but it's restricted. One of the things I've I've discovered because I I've been designing websites for around 18 19 years now and mostly hand coded and about 7 8 years ago moved over to Joomla there's a massive massive audience out there for for WordPress and a lot of people using it but I chose to use Joomla because from a technical point of view it allows me so much freedom to change the, the user interface, uh, the structure, inject my own code and have the design look exactly how I want uh, to the end user and optimize, which is really important from a design point of view if a customer wants a website that ranks really well. And it's only really since I've been speaking with you, Linda, that, that I've realized that optimization isn't really just for businesses, it's for bloggers as well. Oh, absolutely. Blogging is... It's growing every day. It's huge. And I really only know about travel blogging. I don't know about many other... Uh, it, travel blogging isn't even as huge as, say, mommy blogging, which apparently is just huge business. Yeah. And um, cookery, cookery stuff as well. Yeah. I mean, I know since I moved over to G+, uh, Google+, and I've been using that, there's a lot of people, a lot of bloggers on that network. And one of the really significant things, well, there's two things, I think, that are separating your average website from an exceptional website. One of them is Google authorship, and the other one is video. And we're going to cover both of those as we go along. Um, but before you do that, of course, you have to have a concept. Um, I remember speaking with, with yourself, Linda, some time ago, and we, we made a decision on the domain name that we were going to buy, and, and or register, rather, and what we were going to do with that. Now, I don't know if you're actually logged in to cPanel or not, um, but the first thing, before we even get to, to, to that, the first thing I would, I'd like to cover is the choice of domain name. Um, for example, if, if you're a travel blogger and you travel in Asia, then you don't really want a domain name that says European Travels, for example. You know, um, or, or even uh, a, a URL that suggests like .co.uk. You precisely. don't want something that, that um, puts you in a certain place. Yeah, um, it's, it's a curious thing that you mentioned that because there's, uh, there was a video recently by Matt Cutts talking specifically about um, what are called country specific TLDs and the TLD is the .co.uk, .com, .net mm -hmm. and it's the last, the very last piece of the domain name and uh, if I was designing a website for somebody based in the UK, yeah I'd try and get them the .co.uk but I would also try and get them the .com domain because of course the .com is going to rank you know, far more easily. One of the things we did with, uh, with, with Linda mm -hmm. is we, we registered the domain name uh, I believe it was Island Mama's New Life, is that correct, Linda? Yeah, and it was really, really easy to do. Yeah. I did it through your website. And it was uh, yeah, well, I'm not, I'm not going to show that, actually, but I will put a link uh, to that because we actually have a service mm -hmm. on our website that will allow people to search for a domain if the domain is available, apply a hosting package to that domain, and then it's automatically set up for you as the customer. Mm -hmm. One of the things 
that we um, we don't do for the customer but we have video tutorials for is little things like the installation of Joomla or WordPress and I'm just going to log into the back end of the website now unless you're already logged in Linda mm -hmm. now for those of you that aren't, aren't familiar with cPanel cPanel is actually the industry standard for hosting um, not not every hosting company has this and hosting companies that do have it sometimes strip it down purely and simply because they don't want to give you all the tools because it can be a little overwhelming um, you'll see here you've got a preference section you've got a whole section here that can control the mail such as the email accounts uh, forwarders um, the file manager so you can go straight into the server and manage all the files and um, check your disk space usage and things like that um, there's access to at least four or five different login systems there so if you haven't got Google Analytics you can go directly to your own logs you can manage all your domains the databases but the things that you're probably going to use most uh, email mm. and we'll see here that we have an email account set up for Linda Linda at islandmamasnewlife.com even our basic accounts come with I think five email addresses yeah, most, five, yeah. yeah most people only need one but if you need five if you need ten you know and this drop down box here we do have tutorials specifically about setting up email accounts and I'll link to those in, in the uh, description later but you'll see here that we've set up a subdomain called blog.islandmannersnewlife.com and we can set up an email address for either of those because one of them is the primary domain and one of them is a park domain and if I go back to home here we already actually have Joomla installed but what I'm going to show is Softaculous which is a piece of software which has literally hundreds of different pieces of software available to install for example if you want a forum there's a whole host of forums you can install if you want a content management system there isn't just WordPress and Joomla to choose from there's all of these. So that's the correct name for WordPress or Joomla, a content management system. That's correct, yeah. yeah although yes. although both of them are technically referred to as CMS systems, content management systems, personally I prefer to refer to WordPress as a CMS and Joomla as a lot more than a CMS because as we'll see as we go through the course, um, that it does do a lot more little things as well I mean if you don't want a blog but you want an e-commerce website there must be 10-15 different carts you can choose from there and this is just within Softaculous there's another piece of software called Fantastico that has a lot of uh, carts in it as well now I'm going to find Joomla and I'm going to do a Joomla install even though we haven't we've already got Joomla installed okay. it should allow me to email accounts how many databases am I listed SQL databases two out of five so I've got more than enough space find Joomla there we go there's three versions of Joomla there's Joomla 1.5 Joomla 2.5 and Joomla 3 we prefer to use Joomla 2.5 and we'll probably be moving to version 3 um, in the near future now if I click install here this is I mean, again a link to the tutorial to do this nice and slowly but this is how easy it is I'm going to say I want Joomla 2.5 installing and I would like it installing on the standard domain but with the www prefix and I'm going to say I want to install it in the directory test under normal circumstances that would be blank 
and you would just install straight into the root directory. Mm -hmm. The database name we don't need to change. Um, question, what's a root yep. directory? The root directory is the top level directory, for example here, islandmamsnewlife.com. Mm -hmm. So this would be, uh, let's say, directory one, and then you can have another directory even if you, if you choose to, directory two. So instead of the installation going onto the website into the root directory, it will actually go into directory two, which is held within directory one. Okay. So to access the website, you would actually, well, we'll see, because I'm going to put this in a directory called test. I'm going to leave the database name as it is. I'm going to leave the site name as it is and also the description, but you should change that if you're doing the install. And... One thing we would seriously recommend, never, ever, 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 ever use the username admin with the password pass. So I'm going to say admin01 and just a, a simple password, but I'm going to change that later. And set my email address. I can email the instructions to myself, but I don't need to because I'm probably going to delete this installation. Now, I've taken probably two to three minutes to go through that page and explain how to install Joomla. Now I'm going to install. When you that, that's it. Comparing... <laughs> this to WordPress. I mean, all you have to do for WordPress is put in the URL wordpress.com and mm -hmm. you're there, no? Yeah. Um, with, with Joomla and with WordPress, if we install WordPress here, which you'd see, you saw WordPress at the top there when we went to Softaculous, if I'd have selected WordPress, the process is actually almost identical. I select a directory that I want to install into I give it, give the website a name, website description. The, the installation process for Joomla and WordPress is almost identical, but when you go to WordPress.com, it's already installed for you, so you don't have to install anything. As long as you're using their their domain, uh, yeah, domain, WordPress.com. Yes. So WordPress.com at the moment, yeah, okay, Thanks. yeah. So what? I'm going to do now is just go back to this screen share. I'm not going to talk too much about the installation because as we saw, it's click click and it's installed. You know, I could even install uh, if I go back to hang on, WordPress will be here somewhere. I'll find you. I'll go to home. There's always a WordPress logo. There we go. If I was to choose to install WordPress on your domain, the process is identical. So you'll see here, I can install it in the directory WP by default, which I'm not going to. I'll just put test02. Again, database name is the same. Change the name, perhaps. I'm not going to change any of the admin details because I'm actually going to delete this as soon as it's installed, but on another system. But just to show how easy it is to install Joomla and WordPress, that's it. A couple of mouse clicks and it's installed. And if I go to that directory now, you should see a vanilla install of WordPress. Yes. Looks now, that was not difficult. No. Uh, and 90% of the people that we have as customers tend to use Joomla, but we are moving more towards WordPress, and if people want it, we can install it for them. But that's how easy it is to install. So easy. Um, I don't know if this is maybe something that you'd want to talk about later as well. If somebody is moving a blog over, Mm -hmm. 
is the process the process is the same, isn't it? Because that was what I was thinking of doing originally. Yeah, we've done we've actually done both. I've had customers that are on WordPress and want to move from one server to us and we can do that. There's a piece of software that we use that takes a copy of your website and then copies it across to our servers and typically you're looking at around 48 hours for the transfer and it's not the data transfer that takes time it's the domain change because when you move your domain name from uh, this server to this one all the servers in the world have to know that you're no longer here but you're over yeah. here and it's called a DNS server update and mm. a DNS server is basically like an address book when you request a website be it the bbc.co.uk google.com or whoever that request goes to a server which is called a DNS server and that DNS server looks at a list and it says yep Linda's blog is over here but when we move it that DNS server gets a, a piece of information that says Linda's blog is no longer there it's over here and we actually we did one just last week and we executed the transfer overnight we did it because there were US customers we had to wait until around 3 4 in the morning to do the transfer then we did requested the DNS update which typically takes about 48 hours and I think within six hours the DNS had updated and the whole website was moved across and it was working perfectly um, there are other methods sorry hmm? No, I was just going to say that compared to some of the horror stories I hear, that's wonderful. Oh, yeah. Well, we, we charge for the service, of course. Um, but because we charge for the service, we make sure we do it right. You know, um, If the customer's coming across to what no website to host, then, of course, we discount it. Um, and in many cases, we actually do it for free because we know we're gaining a customer from it. And you know, bottom line is that we, we want to provide service, not just just take money off people. So I'm just going to open that up. Now, of course, the template looks different to the standard template, and the reason for that is we went off, we found a template that Linda liked, and also that would give us the ability to be able to make it more flexible later down the line. Um, we went off and we found this template, uh, well, it's from a, a library of templates, and just installed it, and we've cleaned it up and taken away a lot of the data that was there and now we have a website a very basic website at the stage where Joomla has been installed a template has been installed but there is no optimization no categories although you can see some there we're going to change these and as you'll see if we scroll down no content so unless you have any questions Linda I think it might be uh, appropriate to start actually creating some categories in the website. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've got the list. Excellent. Now we can both see the same thing. Fantastic. Right. Before we go on, what I'm going to explain is this is actually a, a vanilla installation of Joomla. There are What's very, very sorry what does that mean vanilla? a vanilla installation of Joomla is there is virtually nothing installed if you hover over the components menu right at the top there you'll see components yeah. one of the key differences between Joomla and WordPress is that WordPress has plugins Joomla has components, modules, and plugins. A component is an application that sits within Joomla. So you'll see here we have ASSEF, which is a search engine friendly URL component. We have J4 Age Statistics, which is a, an analytics program that runs in the back end. We have an editor, uh, JCrawler. And the key one, the one that we're going to be using more than anything, is K2. Okay, well, I've got your categories listed here. Um, and I think the first one was Island Stories, wasn't it? Uh, yes. 
uh, island travels, the categories that I've got in front of me now, really is obsolete because that's the whole blog, if you like. Right. It's not just a category of a blog. Okay, so, so if I'm looking at the spreadsheet here and the first category is island stories, mm. what we need to do is create that category within K2. Now, we can either start from scratch or we can use categories that are already existing. Um, Start, starting from scratch may actually be easier because yeah. I don't think we have any articles, do we? I actually, did shift yes, a couple do. across, but there, there were only like not proper ones. <laughs> they were uh, just trial ones. Uh, it's okay. If we look here, you'll see that category number two, Canary Islands, has one active article and uh, none of the others have any articles. Okay. Um, what you can do then is click on the first category, Island Travels. Well, click on the name or click on the box next? Click on the name. Okay. Right. So I'm going to be changing the name. Yep. Where it says title. Yep. Yeah. So if we change this to. Island storage. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Under title alias, remove island travels. Okay. Yep. And over on the right hand side you'll see a heading that says category item layout. Yep. Click on that. Oh, and then you'll it was see. Open. Yeah, no. Can you click it again, please? Close oh, it. sorry. Sorry. It's okay. Underneath that, you'll see a heading that says metadata information. Yeah. Click on that. Here is where we put the category description and the keywords. Now, I'm 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 guessing you're familiar with um, metadata keywords and and things like that. For optimization purposes. Yes, I mean I understand what they are. I don't mm. understand maybe what the important ones are these days. Okay. But then um, well, that's for me to find out, isn't it? It's mine. Mm, not really. I can help you with it because it's very easy to do um, at a very basic level without doing any research. Um, it's it's probably easy to guess how many people or whether people actually searched for island stories but if you look at that title on its own island stories it doesn't say which island so it could mm. be anywhere so one of the things you could put in the description is Linda Wainwright's island stories uh, for the Canary Islands or something like that and then in the keywords you could put Canary Islands island stories for example you know, this means that when a search is executed, if those keywords are in the keywords, the description, the title, and um, in the content itself, there's a good chance that it will turn up in the search results. But realistically, the category is only there to hold other categories because I've got those the list in front of me of all the other categories. So we may as well leave these blank for now, but. For that would be, uh, and you can add to these, yes. So yes. if, right, my future is traveling the Canary. Actually, before I travel the Canary Islands, I'm going to Ireland. So that's actually going to be the first island that I write about live, if right. you like, or this blog. Fantastic, um, right. So, but I can change that. So as I travel to different islands, I can add uh, yep. to the keywords. I can add Canary, and I can add Ireland, and I can add Cape Verde or Hawaii yep. or wherever. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a tab there that says uh, description on the left hand side. Yeah. Now, in essence, what that, that is, is a box where you would put content. So you'd put something descriptive about the category. So, for example, you've um, just said to me that it's going to be a blog about island travels, the first island, island being Ireland, of course. 
and you could put information in there as a general description about the category again as you said yourself you don't need to do it right now you can come back and do it one of the things I tend to do um, when I'm doing uh, tasks like this is I tend to do things in chunks so I'll get all the categories done then I'll mm. do the keywords then I'll do the descriptions then I'll do the content you know um, because it's it's tiring work and you have to use your brain it's quite taxing because you've got to think about different keywords for each page different description everyone's got to be unique and it can be quite time-consuming mm. but not as time-consuming as changing over every single post one by one. Oh god no <laughs> uh, more interesting yeah, much more interesting. Okay, scroll back up to the top for me, please. Well, yeah, could you click on order? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Could you click on save and close, please? So if I do that before the next session, if I create those categories, mm -hmm. oh wait a minute. We've only talked about creating the main category, haven't we? Not subcategories. Yep. Well, why do, why don't we do that now? Click okay. on Canary Islands, the next category down. And I think the top, well, the one I've got in my list is Tenerife, but I think you said Ireland was going to be one you were visiting. So why don't we make that the mm. next category? And then I've got to take out Canary Islands, obviously. Yeah. The reason why is because the system automatically generates the title alias. Uh, click on the drop down menu for parent category for me, please. Where do I find that? Just underneath the title alias. Alright. And you'll see now that we can actually make this a subcategory of any category, but we're going to make it a subcategory of Ireland Stories. So if you click on that again, and then click the drop down immediately underneath that says Inherit Parameter Options From. So what we can do is we can have any number of categories with any number of parameters and all the parameters are set over on the right hand side. We're going to go over on, over those in detail later and we can decide what image size we're going to use, the, how many columns we're going to use, e everything. And if we like the design of a particular category, when we create a new category, instead of recreating that design, we simply say use that design from that category please. Okay. What we so, haven't done is, is create a new category here, isn't it? We've, yep, we'll do that in a moment. Existing one. All right. Yep. If you click uh, save and close for me, please. And now click the button that says new to create a new category. Uh, top right hand corner. Big orange oh, button. Yeah. Yep. How could I miss that? And then another subcategory, I think, was Tenerife. Oh, we're doing subcategories. Mm, no, I've got Tenerife as a subcategory. Well, let, let's stories. do it. Yeah. Okay. Again, leave the title alias blank. So the parent category is going to be Island Stories. Island Stories. And it's going to inherit its parameters from Island Stories. And then just click save and close. It's as what easy as that. Associated extra fields group. Ah, we're going to come on to that when we cover oh, Google authorship. No, no, it's a good okay. question. And it's really important. What we're going to do is we're yeah. actually going to create additional fields so that you can put yourself in as the author and it links back to your Google authorship profile, your Google Plus profile. Ah, of course. Yeah. Now uh, one of the Same things that we need thing. to remember is that that actually has to be done before we write an article. Okay. So, yeah, I think what we'll do is, is close um, close the session now uh, okay. with regards um, creating categories, etc. Because I think we've been going for around 40 minutes. And yeah, be, yeah. Easily. And I'm going to cut the video down later anyway uh, yeah. to make it, you know, nice and concise because I don't want people watching more than 20, 30 minutes. You know, it gets no, a bit more important. Attention span, yeah. Yeah, if you can just click on the screen share button, go back to Hangouts and click on screen share to kill the screen share.
Is it dead? So, yep, that's dead. I can see you. Um, what I'd like to do, if it's if it's okay with you, Linda, is wrap everything up there and mm -hmm. just say a goodbye to everybody. And uh, we're going to put some links on the video to tutorials and referencing what we've been doing here. And we'll be catching up again probably in the next couple of days. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you tell me when you're free because you are much more tied up with your family. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Thanks very much, Linda. Okay.